Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, I'm Joanna Coles, and we're going to talk all about bees today with Greg Drake. He's the Butler County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Joanna. It's great to be with you today. Well, I'm glad you're here because I know that you're passionate about beekeeping and kind of keep up and have an active organization there in the county. We do. The The Green River Swarm Catchers are, is our bee club. We we had some folks that, that were a little more, uh, I guess, uh, wanted to do something different than the typical Warren County or Barron County or whatever beekeepers. But our bee club meets uh, monthly. We have a bunch of beekeepers in the in the club. Got a lot of hives in Butler County. Uh, I've been the county agent for a long time. When we started this beekeeping thing 15 years ago, there was probably six hives in Butler County. Mm -hmm. and, that, and I would guess now we're probably uh, have 25 people keeping bees, uh, three or 400 colonies, uh, which would probably be small compared to the Warren County group. But uh, it's just, it's been, it's a good group and it's something that we continue to see folks interested in getting involved in. I, I rarely do anything uh, bee related that I don't have two or three people later say, well, you know, I've been thinking about doing that, mm -hmm. been wanting to do it. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, we should talk a little bit more. So it's a great hobby. And a great thing that some folks should be thinking about doing if they're interested in agriculture, if they like nature, uh, if they got want a project for some kids or something to do as a family, maybe beekeeping doesn't seem immediately like the best thing. It's probably not as gentle as a puppy, but it is something good that families can do together. Yeah, and there's a lot of science behind it. I mean, obviously we get the honey, but you know, honeybees are important pollinators to a lot of our agricultural crops. And so they play a huge importance. Yeah, I've got a picture here uh, if we could get cut to that camera, I've got a picture of a honeybee pollinating a flower. Uh -huh. And and there's just so much of the food that we eat in the country that wouldn't the yields wouldn't be good or we wouldn't have it if it wasn't for the honeybees providing that pollination. That is in their nature. They get there. They're there to get the nectar that the flower puts off. But in the process, they get that pollen all over them and do a good job getting the flowers pollinated so we can have the fruits and the vegetables and the things that the bees pollinate. But that picture just shows uh, the honeybee and it's got pollen all over it and and you know a little bit of pollen's little because if it looks like little specks on a honeybee think how little <laughs> bitty those those specks actually are but that's a huge thing of uh, pollination for our vegetable producers here in south central Kentucky and then also of course the honey and I do have a little jar of honey, Joanna. This is my prop that people that ask me, can I keep bees if I live in town? Uh -huh. Well, I bought this honey in New York City behind Rockefeller Center. There was a little there was a, a little farmer's market thing set up there behind where you see the flags, if you've Absolutely, ever been there. Yeah. And uh, there is a beekeeper. He keeps bees on top of all those buildings in New York City, and they pollinate on the flowers, and he says he makes great honey yields. So you can keep bees anywhere. Right. Andrew's New York City honey, if he can do it, then I guarantee you that we can do it <laughs> in Morgantown and Bowling Green and Glasgow and everywhere here in South Central Kentucky. So folks shouldn't think that they have to have a farm to be a beekeeper. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the production side of beekeeping. Like what's going on right now? So right now in the hives, here we are at the end of August mm -hmm. and it's kind of a time where we're about to see our fall blooms happen across South Central Kentucky. The bee colony numbers are somewhat smaller than they were in the spring, but there's still a lot of bees. Uh, in July, there's nothing much blooming, and they had very little to work except maybe some wildflowers, some white clover. Well, now we're seeing goldenrod trying to mm -hmm. bloom and aster trying to bloom. So these bees are going back out, like my picture shows, uh, getting back in the pollen. They're bringing in and making a fall crop of honey, and they'll do that until the frost kills all those plants and then the bee colony numbers will really decrease and they'll go down, we call it a ball of bees that overwinter. And the beekeepers have some, uh, some fall preparations to do here in October. They've got to decide, is this colony big enough to make it through the winter? Are there enough bees there to feed themselves, take care of the queen, 
and survive the winter. So as we go through late summer and into the fall, those beekeepers still have management decisions to do. Probably 80% of the honey is made by the 4th of July, but we are still seeing the, the bees doing some work. They're still pollinating fall crops and some of the things that folks has got out here in the fields. So Absolutely. Now, is there's information available at the Extension Office about beekeeping, right? Yes, we have great publication and a lot of good information. Come by your county office. All right. Thanks, Greg, and thanks for watching. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.